Before dealing with the Rebbe's response to what seems to be a conflict between Rashi and the Zohar, a quick review might be useful. According to Rashi, the Venatati Negatsarat by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, upon a house in which a Jew lived, emanated from and reflected a Riboy Hatov, an intensity of good on the part of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in that by dismantling the structure, partially or wholly, the new owners would discover and take ownership of any valuables that had been secreted by the Canaanite owners prior to the arrival of the Bnei Yisrael into Eretz Canaan. Having said that though, and on the assumption that the discovery of this unearned wealth was a fulfillment of a promise made by Moshe Rabbeinu in the name of Hashem that Batim Meleim Kol Tuv Milata, that upon their arrival into Eretz Canaan they would live in homes filled with good which was not of their doing. If one adopts this line of thinking, then a logical extension would be that the Tzarat, which according to Rashi was a cloud with a silver lining, did not impact on each and every house. For, if this was the case, the fulfillment of the promise in Devarim 611 would have been an unreasonable demand that every single house inhabited by the Jews in Eretz Canaan would at some point in time need to be demolished and then rebuilt, so that the promise of Batim and Malayim Kol Tuv came with strings attached. Furthermore, such a far-reaching precondition would needed to have been reflected somewhere in the text. Lacking any such reference, we can conclude that the Negat according to Rashi, must have been somewhat limited in scope. The Zohar maintains that the Negat emanated from the depths of Ra, Omek Hara. Rashi notes in a commentary to Vayikra 18.3 that the Canaanites were Mukul Kalim Mikol Haumot, were the most morally depraved of all the nations known at the time. And for this reason, God states Vinatati Negatarat to destroy the old and bring in the new. Accordingly, if this was the goal of the Negatarat, and if moral depravity was embedded throughout the entire land, then theoretically the Negatarat would have been found in every dwelling throughout Eretz Canaan. Which poses the question that if we accept the thesis of the Zohar, that the purpose of Venatati Negatzarat was to eradicate the Ruach HaTumah, then in theory this should have been the default position, an obligation for every single Jew upon establishing themselves in Eretz Canaan to destroy and rebuild their homes. And if this was the default position, using the argument presented with respect to Rashi's position of Riboy Tov, this should have been, at the very least, mentioned somewhere in the Chamisha Chum Shei Torah. The fact that this requirement is not recorded anywhere in the Chumash allows us to conclude that the Venatati Negatzarat was not global, did not affect each and every house, but rather was selective. With this, we can align the position of Rashi to that of the Zohar, in that although the reason for the Venatati Negatzarat and the subsequent destruction of the building each comes from a different direction, to Rashi, Ribui Hatov, to the Zohar, Omakara, the there is a commonality between the two positions. This commonality lies in the fact that, according to both positions, the Venatati Negatzarat, it was limited in scope either to a family who deserved the Ribui Hatov, which was channeled through the Negatzarat, or, according to the Zohar, the house may have been used for Avodah Zarah, and hence, on account of the Omek Hara, needed to be destroyed. There is one further point that needs clarification according to the position of the Zohar, and that is that if, according to the Torah Kohanim, and included by Rashi in a commentary to Vayikra 18.3, that the Canaanites as a nation were Muku Kalim Mikol Ha'umot, were people that lacked the moral compass, a concept picked up by the Zohar that maintains that Kivan Shehakananim Hayu of De Avodazara, because they were so immersed in pagan worship, therefore Shauta Bevatehem Ruach Mesa'ava, a Ruach Mesa'ava is a Ruach Tuma rested upon their houses, then in theory, contrary to the argument presented earlier, the Venatati Negatsaras and the subsequent destruction of the house should have taken place throughout the entire land of Eretz Canaan. The fact that this requirement is not recorded in the Chumash doesn't override the reality that pagan worship was widespread throughout the land and therefore at some point in time each and every family should have been required to undertake a reconstruction of their property.